Yeah. All right, guys, we're going to do a post-mortem. So what side do you want up? Right. Okay. So the room is not in the way? Yeah. Yeah, i So knife. Um, what's the quickest way to dull your knife? Oh, it's cut. Cut through the hair, yeah. So, so cut from under the skin? So when you're on your own, it'll kind of move a leg out of the way. Oh, but also looking at her, what do we notice about her? All this fluid. I have a feel of this pitting edema. Pitting edema is when you push on it and it takes a while to come back. See how we push on that and have a feel of it. It's like a rumen. Push firmly on it and then when you let go, it stays in. What's that called? What's that called? Pitting edema? And that's kind of what the rumen feels like when you're break testing. It's got that same dewy feeling. So what I do normally is I start with the brisket and go up to the throat latch, and I start with the brisket, then I go back. So when I'm doing it on my own, I just take a leg and then hold that leg out of the way. Can you hold it now? Um, I'll just kind of show you how I do it on my own initially. I'll get you to pull the leg up later. She's, they still are a little bit twitchy. The way to check to make sure they're out is you know, how people respond. Put the tongue out. If they don't retract the tongue, that, that's your sign that she's uh, that everything is hunky dory. And under the skin. So see how gelatinous oh, that is, guys? Yeah. Oh, so what why is that? Why is it all full of gelatinous stuff? Yeah, 100 percent So what's happening is the the art the art, the um there's too much back pressure in the system that the, the venous side of the capillaries isn't resorbing. Material size put it in, it's not getting resorbed. Because there's too much back pressure in the heart, so congestive heart failure. Very good, Beck. So then I hold that leg out of the way. Say I've got that leg forward. Yeah, guys, you're right. And then on this side, I just go into the skin as well. Is that into the room and it's a carton? Then when I'm on my own, I take the leg and put it up over my shoulder. Like this. Is this guys? Yeah. Alright, so I'll come back today. If someone wants to give me a hand. I'll throw this over my shoulder sometimes. It's easier. So then for this bit, I just get up underneath the skin and I reflect everything back. And I'll explain why in a minute. So I just do the postmortems the same way every time. Again, I'm cutting from underneath to try to keep the uh, keep me from dulling my knife. Reach over to that side. Do I just put the keep the whole body over there so I don't so I don't get your leg? I'm go that way. But it's cool here. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Nat. You're a natural at this. <laughs> You're a nat. For old. This is all very thick because of all that fluid accumulation. is a wire it's punched through the diaphragm into the we'll show you how to get to that bit. Always keep your fingies out of the Otherwise, you end up where you're a very slow typist. Alright, so I want to show you something kind of cool. So if an animal dies of bloat, what ends up happening is, is the rumen fills up with gas. 
pushes on the diaphragm and they suffocate, right? But what it also does, it pushes up on the vena cava and it stops blood from getting back to here. So if an animal dies, it's all bloated up in the paddock. And the owner says, bit of alfalfa in there, what do you reckon, doc? You say, well, it could have died of bloat. Well, things bloat after they die, right? So if you open them up and they die of bloat, they'll be really bloody from here forward and really pale from here back. Super cool. cool. Also, pretty rad as well. So in here we got the hyoid apparatus. I'll show you this one in a minute. Up in here the depth supports the larynx. So if you come in under the jaw, you can cut up that hyoid apparatus. guy here it's esophagus and this will all be congested until it goes into the thoracic inlet that's called a blow line so this will be all dark blue and when it pops through the thoracic inlet it'll be pale white so if you see that it's classic for dying of blow calf diphtheria you guys remember that stuff yeah. what's the bug in calf diphtheria Connecticut Canada almost had it use the bacteria in the coffin so that's, that's from uh, the, this, the increased strider and noise of an abscess right here. What are these little dudes called? Do you remember? Yeah, yeah retinoid cartilage is nice. Here's your epiglottis. So when I do this and I normally leave up post mortem, I'm just going to open this guy up. Is that the same for frothy, like frothy and gas blood? Um, yep. If they die of bloat, in here if you're thinking of what, got, what causes mucosal lesions yeah and then there's some other cool stuff you can see in here like that oesophagostum which means nothing but it's kind of cool when you see it but that all looks sweet as you expect then i go into the trachea and i'm looking for another viral feedlot pathogen here which one's that brd uh, brd is a, is a bunch of viral and bacterial agents what's the virus that causes So what happens is kind of they get BVD, they get IBR, they get BRSV, they get PI3, all that good stuff. And then the Mannheimia hemolytica, which lives up here in the nose, gets a commensal. If it goes down, see that the blood goes down the throat, it gets into the cranial ventral lung lobes, and that creates these havoc in there. And then that's BRD. All right, so let's go see some cool stuff. All right, so we're thinking hardware. So what I want to do is I want to go into the abdomen, and I want to feel along the diaphragm and feel for adhesions, right? So what do That's the omentum I'll cover for Schnarf. So, does that fit along with our story of heart yes. disease? It certainly does. Oh, wow. So we get this omentum out of the way so we can see what's going on. See when we get in there. At least I'm going on the heart for sure. But so there's no adhesions between them? I couldn't be on there. But look at all that. There's definitely like a peritonitis syndrome going on there. Look at that. Look at that horrible liver. Mm 
Ooh. Whoa. What is going on? Whoa. Hey, there's an unhappy liver. So what's that? What's that? Oh, it's just, just congested liver here. So it's congested. It's the why? It's the same thing, all that all that back pressure. So there's gonna be something going on. There's some sort of cardiac insufficiency going on here. Which we'll find out more as we get in there. But their chicken and feels pretty free. Yeah. Let's see what's going on in this heart, eh? Now, in young, young animals, you can cut down a costochondral junction and then cut across. But in old ones like this, the, uh, the costochondral junction has turned to bone. It's cool, and the guts keep moving too. Right-sided heart failure. Look at the size of that heart on that right side. Totally blown out. You don't see this normally at low elevation, but that's complete right-sided heart failure. Like, look at the size wow. of that right side of her heart. Yeah, cool. That is nuts. So here's the part that normally pumps blood to the to the to the body. It's right here, your left side of your heart, that pumps it to the body proper. And then this is the right side, which normally just pumps to the lungs, and it's like blown out, so it's like a dilatative cardiomyopathy. That is just huge. Wow. Wow. So these, all these look okay. The chordae tendineae and the and the valves look pretty normal. There's your little moderator band. 
But um, yeah, Ted, like a, that had gotten so big that, that it wasn't working anymore. I guess. It's just hard. Big gallbladder there. Giving out. She said a big and large right heart. This fat color, Amy. Is yeah. that normal old yeah. cow? Yep, on grass. Yep. So that's just beta carotene. Lead up for just kind of like meh. Her heart gave up. No, that was so good to see. <laughs> Sorry, lovey. Thank you for your sacrifice. 